Good morning. Thanks for joining me today again. Uh, we look at Acts chapter 20, verses 1 through 16 today. And it begins with, it says, After the uproar had ceased, you know, and uh, the people had been excited and worried, uh, especially, you know, stirred up by these silversmiths. And part of the reasoning that... Uh, Demetrius and some others wanted, or some of them wanted to get the, get this riot quelled down and, and you know, not have a big commotion is, is that, you know, if they were, if they were found guilty of riot and, and stuff that way, the, the Roman government would come in and step in and rule by martial law. And the citizens didn't want that for sure. So the, you know, the, uh, the uprising had been ceased. And Paul then calls the disciples together and, and they uh, decide to take off for Macedonia. Paul is continuing his mission. And he'd been in that area for a while and encouraging them. It says he came to Greece and he stayed there three months. And, and then again, when the Jews plotted against him, uh, he was about to set sail for Syria. He decided instead, to re or instead of sailing on a ship, which would have been quicker, he decided to go on foot and go again through the region of Macedonia. And some of the disciples accompanied him that way. And, and there's some thought that maybe Paul wanted some, some time to reflect and to pray and just some time of discernment, you know. And, but other speculation is that, that Paul went on foot, uh, traveling on, on land uh, as a safety measure so that if he was on this ship, he couldn't just mysteriously disappear over the side out in the middle of the ocean or the, the sea someplace. And, and the Jews would be rid of him and, you know, peace would come. So anyway, he, uh, he, he sets across uh, on the, he's going across on land and the others are sailing. And, you know, and in verse six, it says, but we sailed. Yeah. So Luke is, a, is the writer of of the book of Acts. And so here, this is the second time now that we've seen the Luke use the word, but we set sail. The first time was back in uh, chapter uh, 16 at verse 11. Therefore sailing from Troas, we ran into. So there are, there are four instances in the book of Acts that Luke uses the word we. So the one I just shared with about in Acts 16, here again now in Acts 20, um, and then in Acts 21, verses 1 through 18, again, he is accompanying Paul in the journey. And then in chapters 27 through uh, chapter 28, verse 16, Luke is with Paul on the journey. So uh, Luke isn't just someone who is writing after the fact, you know, that way, but he is a believer who has done some traveling with Paul and heard Paul's uh, teaching his exhorting people, his scolding people, his peop warning people, encouraging, you know, and all of those things. Uh, so Luke is writing somewhat from firsthand information, but also sharing what he has heard other times. So Luke is, is, is traveling with some of the other disciples, not necessarily with Paul right now because Paul is going on land. But when they get to... Uh, Part of the deal was that Paul wanted to get to uh, to Philippi for the Passover and to celebrate Passover there. And while he was traveling on the road, he, he did. He, he they, they were in Philippi, and you know the verse seven says, "Now on the first day of the week, when they came together to celebrate the breaking of the bread, this became the tradition of the early followers of the way, the early Christians." The, the Jews always worshipped on the Sabbath. They continue to worship on Saturday, the Sabbath. We as Christians worship on Sunday because that's the day of the resurrection. We break bread on the day of resurrection on Sundays when we worship as a reminder that Jesus tells us to do that. But the early disciples would meet on Sunday and they would, you know, for the explicit purpose of breaking bread together, of sharing Jesus' Last Supper. And, and they, would, they, would, they would come together, they would break bread, they would have maybe a devotional and then uh, go on about their day. But uh, after the, the breaking of the bread on the Sunday, the, the, the day after the 
Passover, uh, they set sail then, and uh, they got ready to depart. But before they departed, Paul was speaking. And it says that he, he, the next day he spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. You know, I think that if I get a 20-minute sermon, that's a long sermon. If You know, and, and sometimes we, you know, when we got a lot of stuff going on in church, we'd have an hour and 10 or hour and 15-minute worship. And, you know, and it was, oh, that was a little bit long. And I remember when I first started up in uh, Ninder Rockford, uh, a gentleman said, you know, a 45, 50-minute service, that's great plenty, Pastor. And, but here, you know, Paul had spoken until midnight. And, you know, that's a long time to sit and listen to somebody. And I, I imagine that there were some questions and back and forth in there. But during all of this, it says there were many lamps lit because it was evening dark. And it got warm and stuffy. And there was this young man named Eutychus who... Uh, fell asleep in a window, a third story window. He fell out of the window. First confirmed person falling asleep during church, huh? But it's not a very funny story either because he fell out of the window, third story, and he hit the ground and he died. However, Paul, on hearing this, went down, stretched his body out again across this young man and the young man lived. And then what's Paul do? He goes back up and he talks till daylight. I mean. Another, another, say, five, six hours. You know, say that daylight is about six o'clock. But that's a pretty long time to be in a gathering and to be speaking. But these people were eager to hear the word, and Paul was encouraging them. And, and some, you know, it says encouraging them. You know, and I've mentioned that, you know, it says sometimes that Paul argues with them. Well, in this encouraging, it, it could be... Uh, just that simple encouragement, or it could be rebuking them, it could be instructing them, teaching them, it could be affirming what they're doing, it could be warning them. I mean, encouragement is a lot of different things, and that's it's the same uh, with criticism. I mean, there's constructive criticism, there's destructive criticism, and, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at different words, but Paul spent a lot of time talking and speaking and teaching here before he actually sent journey. And then in verse 13 that we look at today, it says that Luke writes, then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to Azos and they're intending to take Paul on board for he'd given orders to go on foot. So he went one more day's journey on foot. And it was on this day's journey that that he evidently had a, a vision, a, a message from the Lord through the Holy Spirit, and Paul had many of those and, and relied on that um, feeling of conversation with God that way. And after that, you know, he had much more of an urgent um, feeling of needing to get to Jerusalem. And, and he wanted to be in Jerusalem, it tells us, by the day of Pentecost. And Pentecost... Um, is, you know, 50 days roughly, 50 days after Easter. Penta is five, and um, so it's the 50, 50 days that Jesus spent on earth that way. And so it's, but, but he had this vision I mean, with the Lord, and he, and he wanted to get going. And again, Luke is traveling with Paul and these others. And, you know, and it talks about, you know, Paul met them at Azos. They took him on board. They came to Middle East, they went to the next day to Chios and then to Samos, and you know it. it uh, a lot of short, short journeys on this ship. You know, this ship was a, a merchant ship, stopping at different ports of call, trading and buying and selling, and and uh, have these passengers on board was was just you know a little bit of extra income, I would guess, for the for the owner of the ship. But it wasn't the main purpose of the ship, you know. So the the passengers didn't just book a, a boat from here and, and say, "I want to go to there," you know. They they found a ship that was going to end up where they wanted to be, and rode along kind of for the ride, and that was a very common method for them to to get around and, and to move that way. Um, and it says that Paul had decided not to stop at Ephesus again on his way to just concentrate on getting getting to Jerusalem. 
And I think about Paul uh, wanting to get to Jerusalem. It reminds me of, you know, in, in the Gospels, it says Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. He, he knew that that was his destination. He knew that that was where everything was going to happen, where the, the, the betrayal, the arrest, and all of that would happen. He knew that Jerusalem was, was the center of all that would happen. And, and we look at, I look at Jerusalem as, as a focal point of the Jewish faith and as the place where the Christian faith actually really got its true beginning because it was in Jerusalem that Jesus was crucified, resurrected, and the early disciples first saw him. And from that time, the disciples began to proclaim what Jesus had been telling them, that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Savior, Jesus is sent from God for you and for me. May he walk with you today, as he always does. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, from near and far, all, all are welcome.